the Synology DS218 Plus versus the Synology 918 Plus. I did just do, not long ago, a video praising the DS218 Plus and saying it was perfect for my needs and I was gonna use it for a Plex server. I've had a bit more time with it. I've had a time to think about it. I did buy it on the basis of price. The two bays versus the four bays. On paper, the CPU, the Intel J3355 did hardware transcoding supported by Plex. Thought that would be good enough. Turns out I didn't get it completely right. And as happy as I am with it, I've decided that although it's nearly twice as much for the 918 Plus, I think it's more than twice the NAS. And I'm gonna go over all my reasons why I'm saying that. So even though it's twice the price, nearly, not quite, I do think it makes it value for money when you take into account, A, it's hardware, and B, I've got four bays there to do what I want with in the future rather than stuck with the two bays. So, a comparison. Obviously, the 918 Plus is a four bay, it's a lot bigger. But to be quite honest, it's not an issue. They're both, yeah, they're both by the way, they both got two four terabyte hard drives in set up in RAID 0. I'm gonna do some quick tests later on and show you. That's how they've both been set up. The main difference will be two gigs of RAM in the 218 Plus, got eight gigs of RAM in the 918 Plus. I'm gonna get on to why I still think that makes it all a fair comparison and why I think is good value for money. So as I said, obviously it's a bigger bay and obviously that means you get a bigger power supply with the 918 Plus. It's a 60 watt power supply on the 218. It's a 100 watts of power supply on the 918 Plus. Obviously you're gonna have more drives and the hardware's better. So let's go over all the differences before I get to, for me, the crux of the whole matter, what they like running Plex and doing your 4K transcoding, etc. First of all, I'm gonna say, on the back, the first difference is obviously you've got two fans instead of one. However, they are quiet fans. It's not an issue for me. And I have to say, I have been sensitive in the past to the cheap fans, these enclosures, these are NASs. I've had a lot of enclosures as well been sensitive to the screaming sound you tend to get, and I had to upgrade them always. This is the first time I've had a NAS where I've not wanted to upgrade it because whether it's quiet, medium, or loud mode, it's still pretty quiet. And I've got to point out, it's not just about is it quiet. There's this quality of noise that you get with fans. So you can get some that really hum and it's really annoying, and then the quality ones where it's just the sound of wind rushing, almost just like white noise, it's not an issue, even if the decibel readings are exactly the same. So these are quality fans. I haven't taken out to see exactly what they are, but I'm happy with them. I'm gonna say that. It's an issue because you've got two fans, obviously, in the 918 Plus and only one in the 918. And if you're sitting it in, in a room that you are also sitting in, you don't want it to be too noisy. Big difference here now. You've got dual LAN ports on the 918. You've only got a single LAN port on the 218 Plus. They're both, of course, are gigabyte LANs but you've got two of them. Now that does mean you can have link aggregation or bonding or one of the many terms they give it. What it means is in the software, in the DSM operating system, you can set that up to one of three different options depending on whether you want failover over and above extra bandwidth or not. So you can have it so it's a double link. Obviously it doesn't really double your speeds. In the real world, you've got overheads the real benefit, of course, is when you've got multiple users using your box, you're still gonna be bottlenecked down the line with that one gigabyte line where all the switches are gonna be one gigabyte, but each user will now get more bandwidth, although each one on their own, if it's just you and your NAS, you're not really gonna see the difference and you're gonna have overheads. You'd have to ask yourself if it's, if it's really worth it. Unless you've got lick bonding all the way down your network. Two USB 3 ports on the back of the 218, a single USB port, an eSATA, an eSATA, Kensington lock, Kensington lock. So you've got one extra USB port on the 218 Plus, but you've got an extra LAN on the 918. On the front, first of all, we'll say you don't get this, what, it kind of silly. Look, I know it kind of works, but it's gonna, it's actually quite annoying to me in use. 
this plastic, not real, you know, fold away cover. You take it off, you've got to bung it somewhere. There's no messing about. There isn't one of these false kind of covers that you're going to get with a 218. Because you've got two drive bays, four drive bays, the mechanism in which they slot in is slightly different. So you can see on the 918, it's slightly better in terms of securely fastening and then you can lock it if you really wanted to. So no accidental removal before, you know, without using your key. Where this is, it simply plugs in and you pull it out. There's no actual locking mechanism. It's a matter of pushing it until you hear it firmly click in. They are both, of course, toolless tray designs. If you're using a 3.5 inch hard drive, if you're using a 2.5 inch, then you have to use screws. Of course, they both have a power on, power off button. By the way, you can actually turn off and reboot each NAS using the software. It's DSM software and using a browser. You've got a copy button on the 218 Plus. This isn't an issue to me. I'm not sure I'm gonna to get to use it. Maybe I will get to use it and think it's brilliant. However, it's missing entirely on the 918. So if that's an issue to you, bear in mind, there isn't a USB copy button, which means you can press that and a USB drive plugged into the front port. You can set up in software, exactly what you want to happen when you press that C button, copy from what and copy to what. You, so they both got the USB 3 port as well on the front. They both got indicators for your discs, obviously four there, two there. They both got a status light. The difference here though is there's a LAN light. I find that quite useful. I'm not quite sure why it's omitted on the 918 Plus. It's useful to see when your LAN is properly up and when it's not up. So a LAN status light on the front of the 218 Plus, you don't get that on the front of the 918 Plus. So that's the actual physical differences in terms of appearance and the actual enclosure. In terms of other things, now obviously one of the big pluses about using Synology family brand is that they do an expansion unit. The expansion unit supported by both of these drives works in a different way. If you connect it to your 918 Plus, you can expand any existing RAIDs as though they were all in the same enclosure. If you try and do the same thing on the 218, you'll find you can't do that. You can only use the expansion unit as a separate volume. So if that's an issue to you, maybe something to consider. However, I did see that Synology say, for best performance, use drives in their own enclosure. In other words, for best performance, although it seems the whole, you know, one of the big ideas is that you can expand your RAID seamlessly. They're saying, try and keep to the drives in the physical NAS itself to themselves and the drives in the enclosure to themselves, almost negating that one of the benefits of the 918 Plus. You can fit M.2 drives, NVMe, a pair of them on the bottom of your 918 Plus. That's a big difference. However, you cannot set them up as a separate volume. If you're thinking, oh yeah, that'd be handy, have an even faster drive. They can only be used as caching. So in the software, in the DSM software, they have an option to use caching and you can set up all your options that way. I have seen the comments that although you can have 16 gigs of RAM in each of these units, although officially not supported, unofficially, that's not an issue. If you're going to use the M2.0, SSDs for caching, you might have an issue of that working with 16 gigs of RAM for some reason. So just pointing that out, it's not an issue to me. I don't think I'm gonna be using caching, but that is one of the differences. You can't do that at all on the 218. And another reason why I'm saying, I think it's more than twice the two bay. You know, you've doubled your bays, but I think overall, although it's near twice the money, I think you're getting a lot more than twice for your money. There's another big difference. now. It's really handy. You can, first of all, I'm gonna say, this, the, nine, the 218 comes with two gigs of RAM, 918 Plus comes with four gigs of RAM. There's a difference, again. However, while it's really handy, you do get an extra empty slot. There's an empty slot there to easily insert a stick, an extra stick of RAM. You can't get to the other stick of RAM to upgrade it because it's right on the other side of the motherboard and it means taking apart the closure. Of course you can do it, but technically it voids your warranty. So you may or may not want to be doing that. However, on the 918 Plus, not an issue. Both RAM slots are completely in view. 
another thing that makes a 918 plus for me again a nicer option than the 218 so hopefully you can see there's two you can get to both the sticks of ram to upgrade them put me drives back in now i did add four gigs of ram because it was only like 25 pound you know i guess i would like 16 gigs of ram but that mean that means taking away the original uh, stick as well and then i've got to add physically 16 gigs of ram pay for 16 gigs of ram to have eight gigs of ram i've only got to pay for four if you see what i'm saying so another plus for the 918 uh, on that ground so i've got eight gigs of ram and it's only cost me like another 25 quid whereas i didn't want uneven ram sticks of rams in both the slots on the 218 so i was going to change both or not at all so the processor is different in the 218 plus you get the intel celeron j3355 in the 918 plus you get the intel celeron j3455 it's a two gigahertz two core cpu in the 218 it's a quad core cpu albeit at 1.5 gigahertz in the 918 so technically if you're just having single threads it's tiny 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 bit slower but overall it's massive it's twice as fast if you're doing multi-threaded tasks you're getting twice the machine so again why it's at least twice that why i think it's good value for money if you're comparing these two options side by side which i've had to do because i did get them 218 and realized actually although i've got to pay a bit more money or quite a bit more money i'm getting a lot more for my money they both do 4k hardware decoding 30 frames per second x264 x265 and so although on the lower end synologies with the realtek cpu it actually does 4k hardware transcoding 60 frames per second overall the intel is a better cpu and because i specifically want this for plex plex doesn't support the realtek cpu for hardware transcoding and it does support the intel of course the 918 is more power hungry 17 watts versus 28 watts is the rated power use hibernation mode 5.4 versus 12.6 so you know if it's on 24 7 it's costing you twice as much to run the 918 another big difference why it's more than twice the unit two-year warranty on the 218 plus it's a three-year warranty on the 918 plus you also get an option to go for a five-year extended warranty now i don't have millions of users in fact it's probably only going to be me for foreseeable future however if you have lots of users they have this rated for maximum concurrent connections cifs afp ftp 500 versus 1000 on the 918 so you can get twice as many simultaneous connections is rated for on the 918 if you have lots of users it's an indication it's going to be coping a lot better you can use these for recording surveillance cameras now it has to be the ones that synology say are supported but if you're using supported cameras and you want to record those streams rated for 25 on the 218 rated for 40 on the 918 plus virtual machine instances that they recommend should be the maximum two on the 218 plus four on the 918 plus it's a beefier machine you're not just getting twice the possible storage space it's a better machine i made a mistake i think getting the 218 trying to save some money because long term this is going to serve me better and i know it's going to serve me better because in use it's been better so i'll just quickly give you a couple of indications what it's been like to use with plex and also i do want to say that if you bought the 218 you think oh maybe i will get the 918 but i've already got mine set up well it's going to be a bit of a hassle switching them over it's actually hassle free make sure you take your drives out from the 218 and have them have the first drive again in the first bay and the second drive in the second bay when you boot up the nas itself will recognize it's been used in the 218 and now you want to use it in the 918 and it'll make the appropriate changes without changing your setup in any way. So everything will stay the same. It'll go through what it calls the migration process and set it up nicely and it'll be seamless and it'll start up again exactly like it was on the 218. So what happened to me was a no-brainer, easy move to go with the same drives 218 to 918. As I said, in terms of my experience with, with Plex, 
First off, let's give it a big test. Transcoding an X265 HEVC 4K video into 20 megabits a second, 1080p. The difference between the two actually in use. So actually usable with the 918 when it wasn't usable, it was stuttering and stopping way too much with the 218. So there was a big difference. And simply, if you're buying it for Plex, and I know it may not be the situation that you know, you're gonna be using it in, you may not have any 4Ks and not, you know, recode them all to 264 or whatever, but in, in you know, a real testy situation, the 918 copes just, I mean, it was a little bit stuttery if you, if you look, but it, to all intents and purposes, it was playing quite smoothly, but you could just see a slight stutter. But, uh, but in terms of a sheer comparison, the 218 couldn't do it at all. It was just, just kept stopping really. Obviously, that's transcoding. If you're direct playing those same videos, they play fine on both of them. So no problem playing direct play, as they call it, 265, a big 4K file of 218, throwing up the message, the server is not powerful enough to transcode this if you need to transcode it down to a different stream. So to see exactly what the difference was, I went into Plex software and I just went to, on the same video file, to optimize it, in other words, to convert it straight off to an eight megabit per second, 1080p file that's gonna play nice and easy. So what they call optimizing, in other words, it's another version of the same movie that you can play as an alternate. Transcoding it on the actual server itself, the difference between the two. So pretty hefty conversion. Transcoding 4K 265 HEVC down to 1080p dual processor on the 218 versus the quad core on the 918 and basically the 918 is twice as fast neither of them are going to do real time but the 918 is not far off doing it in real time which would be above one times but you'll see it takes twice as long on the 218 to transcode than on the 918 you're going to finish a transcoding on the 918 in half the time is going to take you on the 218 And in this case, you're talking over two hours saved. So it's twice as fast on the 918 Plus. Finally, the big test. How many streams can I play on each server? How many mates can get online and play off of your server? This was a big surprise to me. On the 218, and these are only 1080p files, and he managed to get three streaming from the 218 Plus. I mean, 13 I was streaming and it was slightly stuttery. It was only at 14 that some of those streams, you know, were stopping completely and you couldn't really watch it. So I was amazed at the, I was amazed that it could get 13 and I was amazed that I could only get three on the 218. So yeah, one thing that leads me to do is to show you the difference in boot up times. If that's, if you're going to be turning them on and off when you don't like a lot of lag. So the difference in boot up times, I've got them both connected to Milan. So it's not going to be hanging about saying, hey, where is the LAN gone? So I think this is a fair test. I'm going to try and start them as close as I can to identical timings. So the 918 is booted and any little bit of lag, but consistently the 918 plus is the fastest to boot. And that pretty much sums up. It's a better machine. I know it's nearly twice the money, but it's more than twice the hardware. It's more than twice the NAS in my opinion. And for all your future upgrade options, hope you got something out of my video and thank you for watching. UK. Okay.